G'day everyone. Um, Anonymous on uh, Twitter just asked an interesting question about differentiation of metals, different types of metals using uh, electromagnetic properties of the metals, in particular their permeability and the change of inductance in a coil associated with putting the metal in the volume of the coil. So I've arranged a little uh, little experiment and demonstration here. We have a range of different materials ranging from aluminium, titanium, zinc, copper, iron, ferrosilicon, uh, iron sulfide and I think it's a nickel zinc ferrite and used for the broadcast band as well as some uh, strain, Australian coinage and a little um, Coppitz oscillator here with a, an inductor that I've wound. It's, uh, it's about it's about 50 millimeters in diameter so that we can uh, place various objects in it and uh, drop them through it. In order to uh, hear the difference in inductance that this is going to produce, we're going to beat the frequency that this LC oscillator produces against the local oscillator in my HF receiver over here. So as you can hear that tone is representative of the particular frequency that the oscillator is operating at. In this case, uh, it's about 3.9 megahertz. You can see here if I pull the oscillator a bit, the tone changes. Let's start with coinage. This is a uh, Australian $2 coin, copper nickel, I assume. And it uh, definitely does pull the oscillator quite a bit. Almost all of our coins, regardless of colour, are uh, copper and nickel and will react similarly. But if you drop them through the coil, the duration and the particular magnitude of the shift is a signature of the type of coin that's being used. I believe um, there are devices available commercially on the market that are essentially money boxes that use this principle to automatically add up the coins for you. And it wouldn't be terribly difficult to build such a device using an oscillator just like this and a microcontroller to characterize the response as the coins fall through the coils. You can see I bumped the coil, it's not very stable at the moment because it's not glued down or anything. Okay, let's try aluminium first. As you can see it doesn't have a whole lot of effect. Let's go with titanium. Titanium has a, a, quite an effect, and you hear the frequency shifts up, which means the inductance is dropping. Now, zinc, very similar to the aluminium, not a whole lot of an effect. Copper, very little effect at all. If we actually used a loop of, uh, of copper metal, you would find there's a bit of a response, and it would probably shift the frequency up. This is uh, 200 mesh powdered copper, it's not particularly conductive, so it, uh, it looks mostly lossy to the coil, really. Alright, now, iron. Powdered iron has fantastic permeability and fairly low losses because the, its bulk conductivity is quite low. As a matter of fact, the uh, powdered iron toroids that you use for HF inductors that I'm going to talk about in another video um, are made out of this kind of stuff. But the actual atoms involved, the, how their electrons are are shared with other with the other atoms in the material makes all the difference. For example, this is ferrosilicon. And this is iron sulfide or fool's gold pyrite it also doesn't have a huge effect. Now remember that our zinc had very little effect at all. Now if I use a zinc ferrite, biggest effect overall, even though this is quite a thin sample, it pulls the inductor enormously. Why different materials have such different effects is quite a complicated subject. Um, you also have to take into account the different frequencies that you're applying to the materials and uh, complex permittivity and permeability can get to be quite complicated subjects that I won't cover here. I'm not really fully versed in the details myself but for uh, practical RF circuits, powdered iron and various different kinds of ferrites are the most 
common practical cores that you'll find. And uh, maybe in another video we'll talk about how to use them and, and how to measure their properties roughly so that you, you can actually build real inductors with them quite simply. Um, no hefty maths involved, if you can handle a square root and uh, you can count turns, you can build practical inductors.